Nope, I can't do it. I will never watch this movie. It scares the living shit out of me just checking out the trailer. Any film that deals with exorcism, I'm out on. remember when Buster Douglas knocked out Mike Tyson and shocked the world because Mike Tyson was the most dominant, indestructible fighter the world had ever seen. And Buster Douglas, he was a journeyman to the point. He was a 42 to 1 underdog heading into that fight. Meaning, had you put $1 on Buster Douglas to beat Mike Tyson, you would have won $42. The movie Unfriended from 2014, had you invested $1 into this movie, you would have made $64.40 because it was a million dollar budget. It made over $64 million at the box office. It's number 10 on my list. Highest ROI movie since the year 2000, Unfriended. After emerging onto the scene by creating and directing the super successful Saw franchise, James Wan said he wanted to do a movie at a similar budget point without all the gore so he could appeal to a mainstream audience. So he decided to team up with super horror producer Jason Blum and they created the Insidious franchise. A franchise, the original, was budgeted at $1.5 million and it netted over $98 million worldwide at the box office. A $1 investment into the Insidious franchise would have netted you over $66 dollars and James Wan he went on to do much bigger budgeted films after that like Aquaman and the Fast and the Furious but he got to start with Saw followed up with Insidious and he's number nine on my list movies with the highest ROI in the history of movies the story of Nia Vardolas and my big fat Greek wedding is a great lesson for life you never know who is watching even if you're performing a one-woman show in a small 99 seat theater in Los Angeles Tom Hanks one night could be in the audience, love what he sees, options the script to a movie based upon the one-person show that you're performing, and then turn it into a massive box office success because that's exactly what happened with My Big Fat Greek Wedding. He saw Nia Vardolas doing a one-woman show named My Big Fat Greek Wedding at a small theater in Los Angeles. She actually had a feature script that went by the same name. Tom Hanks decided to option that script, turn it into a movie, a movie that was made for five million dollars and made 375 million dollars at the box office that is 75 dollars per dollar spent roi on this movie and tom hanks he made over 44 million dollars off this film and it's number eight on my list i know that this series is a little bit more niche than usual and a lot of you probably haven't seen many of the films on it but i highly recommend going and checking out searching because this film is fucking awesome it was made for only eight hundred thousand dollars to put that in perspective the opening scene in saving private ryan the d-day war scene scene. That scene in 1998 cost $12 million to shoot. The entire production budget of a film in 2018 was $800,000. And this movie made $75 million at the box office. Its ROI for its investors was $86 per dollar spent. It starred John Cho, probably most famous for Harold and Kumar go to White Castle. It's a fantastic flick and it's number seven on my list. I would say investing $1.2 million into a movie and it's spawning a billion dollar film franchise is a pretty good return on investment. That's akin to spending $1.2 million on Apple stock in 1996 when it was just 22 cents a share and then selling it in 2021 when it was $180 a share because that's exactly what happened for the investors of the soft film franchise. The first movie in 2004 was $1.2 million to make. It made over $100 million at the box office. It spawned nine sequels and it launched the career of James Wan, one of the most prolific horror directors we have ever seen in the Saw film franchise. Number six on my list, greatest ROI since the year 2000 for movies. Nope, I can't do it. I will never watch this movie. It scares the living shit out of me just checking out the trailer. Any film that deals with exorcism, I'm out on. But apparently... I'm alone on this one because a lot of people turned up to see this movie despite critics calling it the worst horror film of all time. It was made for $1 million and it made over $100 million at the box office. That's why we don't listen to the critics because you guys are all snooty, virtue signaling leftists that don't know what the fuck you're talking about. We let audiences decide because the audiences, they love the devil inside. It was $1 million, made over $100 million at the box office. That is over $100 per dollar spent ROI for its investors and it is number five on my list. What is it about sharks that people like so much? We got fucking Shark Week. Jaws is a massive hit. People went on to see The Meg, and that movie had the worst CGI I've ever seen in my entire life. And Open Water, it's a movie, a survival horror thriller that centers around sharks. It was made for $500,000. It made over $100 million at the box office. Number four on my list, highest ROIs in the history of movies since the year 2000, because this movie made over $111 per dollar spent. But I've seen this film. 
I don't fuck with sharks. So people at home, sharks are not friendly. Sharks are not nice. Stop being so obsessed with sharks. I feel like Napoleon Dynamite is the Alexei Pokashevsky, AKA Poku of movies because we all know it's not very good, but we're cheering for it still. Poku is just like that in basketball. We know he's not very good, but we're rooting for the guy to do well. He's the Bruno Caboclo of this generation. He's more Bruno than he is Kevin Durant. But Napoleon Dynamite, it was the little engine that could. It was made for $400,000. It made over $40 million at the box office. When Uncle Rico came back to do commercials with Gardner Minshew a few years ago, we all loved it. We all still low-key have a Vote for Pedro t-shirt tucked away in our closet somewhere. And it's number three on my list. Highest ROIs for movies since the year 2000, Napoleon Dynamite. Do you guys ever wonder where this fake news phenomenon and your parents logging onto Facebook and reading articles on their timeline and believing things that are absolutely ridiculous as if they're truth, where this whole thing came from? Well, it came from the Blair Witch Project. In 1999, the internet was in its infancy and the Blair Witch Project was brilliant because it used a PR campaign to frame this found footage movie as if it was actual events. It can be said, the Blair Witch Project is the first internet's occurrence of fake news. And it paid off tenfold because people went to the theater thinking that this movie was real. And they showed up in droves. It was $600,000 to make this movie when it was all said and done. It made over $200 million at the box office. And it's number two on my list. Movies with the highest ROIs in the history of cinema since the year 2000. And I know it's the year 1999, but I had to put Blair Witch on here. Number two. You guys know who super producer Jason Blum is, right? Blumhouse Productions behind such movies as Get Out, The Purge Franchise, The Invisible Man, The Conjuring, Insidious. Well, his first movie was made in 2009. It was called Paranormal Activity. It was filmed down in San Diego for $450,000. Upon screening this film for an audience, Paramount didn't think it was going to do very well, so they buried it. So much so, they gave Jason Blum 70% of the back end. And that 70% of the back end, after the movie made nearly two 200 million dollars at the box office was worth nearly a hundred million dollars and to make matters worse jason blum this started his entire production company and his run of horror films that have been highly successful for under five million dollars he did not sign a first look deal with paramount he instead went over to the competitor in universal and jason blum he is by far the most premier horror producer in the entire industry and paranormal activities number one on my list movies with the highest roi since 2000